Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in the last several videos, we've been focusing our attention on learning how to use Transex, and in the last uh, few videos, the last couple of videos, we've been learning how to use Transex to go from the Moon back to the Earth. Uh, we learned how to go from the moon back to the Earth using the standard MFDs, using just uh, nothing but orbit MFD early on in the uh, Absolute Beginner Guide series. But doing that method um, isn't as efficient as it could be if we use other MFDs that are a little bit more sophisticated, and we can have a little bit better targeting if we use other MFDs like Transex. Now, there's one thing that I want to cover before we move on to new information. There's probably quite a bit more that we could talk about with regards to the Earth to the Moon trip and the Moon to the Earth trip. But again, I don't want to uh, talk about one thing too long before we move on to new information. So probably in the next video, we're going to move on to Mars, or at least when this when this part's done, we're going to move on to we're going to move on to learning how to use Transex to go to Mars. But before we get to that, I do want to cover. Uh, how we can combine MFDs to get a better result overall. And going forward, this is this is what you're going to want to do in, in a lot of cases. In some cases, you can just use one MFD, and that's fine. But um, you'll, you'll see here in this example why it can help if we combine uh, multiple MFDs. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And I'm going to switch over, of course, to the larger... The, uh, MFDs here because they do show up a lot better in the video playback. Now we're going to run through a trip from the moon back to the earth and I'm going to go through the beginning part really fast because I already covered it in the last few videos and I don't want to spend time on informa uh, that information uh, too much because we've already covered it. So let's do this quickly. Let's bring up Transex over here and we're going to escape. We're going to go forward to the this view. Uh, or this stage rather. Now we're going to view over to the eject plan. We're going to put in the amount of negative prograde velocity that we need to get back to Earth, which is going to be something close to that, but now we don't know exactly where we are. So we're going to press the uh, VW to get over to setup. And now we're going to turn the scale to view to target so that we can get that zoomed in view of the Earth. Then we're going to view back over to the eject plan and we're going to put in a little bit more negative prograde so that we can see that dashed yellow line come down to the Earth. Uh, of course, there's probably too much of an adjustment at this point, so I'm going to adjust down to medium and put in some minus until we have the orbital line down about to that uh, gray or that blue uh, outer sphere or outer circle. So something about like that. Now we're going to view back over to setup, change the scale to view back to craft or all, either one is fine. Now I'm going to bring up transex on this side. And we see that we're already in view setup. So since we're already in view setup, we want to change any variables here that we want to change. And that's going to be uh, graph projection. Since we have, uh, you know, we have the eject plan over here, it makes sense to set the graph projection to plan. So let's do that. Now we're going to bring up the escape plan on this side. And remember, the PE distance is how high we want our orbit to be, and we don't want it to be that far out. So we're just going to put in. 1758E3, that'll give us a 20 kilometer orbital altitude target for when we get up off the moon. Now we're going to press VW, excuse me, no we're not. We're going to press VAR to get over to the eject orientation. And remember there are two or eject orientations we can choose from. We can take that one, which will mean that we're going to come out here, go all the way around the moon and eject here. Or we can take the short way, and I always prefer the short path. So that's what we're going to do. And again, if we need to, it's not terribly necessary, but we can view over to setup and change the scale to view to a target to kind of zoom in on the moon a little bit. That way we can get a little bit better refinement with our white line, but typically you can get it even without zooming in. Do an adjustment here and we're all set there. Okay, so again, that's uh, that's just a really quick recap uh, of exactly what we did before. And I went through it very fast again because we've already done it and I want to focus on new information in this particular video. So let's fly this plan. Let's get up off the moon and get going. Now we are in the XR2, so that means we need to have the uh, hover doors open, uh, radiator open, and it wouldn't hurt to have the retro doors open just in case you overshoot 
when you're getting up into orbit. So let's turn on the APU. APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. It's what provides hydraulic uh, control. So basically everything that moves on the uh, XR2, like the radiator, the rudder, the uh, hover doors, the nose cone, all those moving parts require this hydraulic pressure to be on. So retro, hover, we've already got the radiator open. So we're all set. Okay, now uh, we're gonna get up off the ground and we're gonna raise the landing gear and then we'll close the hover doors in a bit. So we'll leave the APU on for now. So we need a heading of 240. So that's going to be uh, a little bit faster if we rotate to the right. So let's get going. Wheels Hovering up. And I forgot to... Uh, Rotation. I forgot to turn off external cooling. That's just a bad habit, uh, bad form on my part. You really should turn off external cooling before you, uh, before you take off. I actually kind of forgot what the heading was, but I think it was like this. It was like 240 something, wasn't it? I don't remember. But I'll be able to know when I look at the uh, relative inclination and how I'm doing. So full power on the main. Now we're going to eliminate all the hover. Now we're going to pitch up enough to keep the velocity vector above the horizon. And the relative inclination is coming down, so at least I'm close on the heading if I'm not right on. Now I'm going to do control V to close the hose hover doors because they don't need to be open anymore. And I'm going to bring up orbit MFD on this side, make sure the projection is ship and distance is APA, PEA, which it is. Drop down the uh, velocity, drop down the uh, pitch a little bit because we don't want to climb too, too much. Uh, we can see our horizontal speed there so we know if we're descending or not. Put in a little bit more right bank, see if that speeds up the relative inclination coming down. Looks like it is. Now we can press control A to turn off the APU. We don't need it on anymore and we'll just be wasting fuel. So you can see the velocity vectors right there on the horizon. We're gaining altitude ever so slightly, so we got a pretty good pitch at this point. You don't want to pitch real steeply when you're getting up into orbit around the moon because you'll end up um, you're, you'll, you'll end up with the apoapsis of 20 kilometers long before your orbit is circularized. And I could just see there that the line of nodes flipped around, which means I'm yawing a bit too far to the right at the moment. So I'm going to yaw back to the left here, and you can see that relative inclination coming down. And we're almost at orbital velocity, so let's go level on the horizon. And watch our APA. Right there at 16 kilometers. Now we just need a little bit more to get to the target of 20. A little bit more. And there we have our target. So now we can switch over to the orbit HUD. And now what we want to do is uh, do what well, we need to ask ourselves a question. Do we need to circularize or not? The time to the apoapsis is 1,400 seconds, and we're going to begin the burn in 1,800 seconds. So in this case, we actually do need to uh, circularize before, uh, before we actually do the ejection. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. That creates a little bit of an issue, though, because that only gives us about 400 seconds um, about 420, 430 seconds after we circularize to set up the maneuver. So we might actually want to go ahead and go forward to about a thousand seconds, set up the maneuver, and then, uh, then circularize after that. That way we don't run out of time. Let's go ahead and warp time forward here. And when we get to about, a th uh, the begin burn is about a thousand. We'll set up the maneuver. Okay. We're close enough to that point. All right, let's bring up uh, TransX then on this side. And we're going to come back here to stage one on this side. So we've got stage one on both sides. And on this side, though, we're going to view the maneuver. We're going to turn maneuver mode on. And we're going to set the prograde velocity to that number, whatever that number happens to be. And in this case, this is actually going to be a bit lower once we actually get over here because we're going to circularize before we eject. But nevertheless, we'll still set it to that number. It's going to be 840.8. .8. And now we want to view over to the date. And remember, the date is very sensitive. This is also time. So instead of being on a course setting, which would adjust by many hours at a time, we only need to adjust the date forward by you know a small portion of our orbit. So it's just going to be a few minutes. So let's go back to the ultra setting and swing that line around until it lies straight over top of the other one. Let's go down to a hyper setting. So make sure we get a little bit more precision. It's very close. Now let's go down to micro. 
and it's right there. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to make changes to our time in prograde here in a moment. Now, again, uh, Transex prioritizes the, the, the stage two over the stage one maneuver, so we need to go forward on this side, view over to the eject plan, and we need to reset this prograde. And now Transex is um, now Transex is is uh, favoring the or prioritizing the maneuver. Now again on this side this is optional, but uh, but I don't like these types of sideways projections. So we're going to view over to the setup, and we're going to change the 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 graph projection now to maneuver because we've set up a maneuver. Uh, maneuver or focus is fine. And now uh, we're going to, now we're, we're pretty well set up, but we're going to, in, in, this, in this case, we're going to ignore setting our focus PED to 6.571 like we did in the other video. And the reason we're not going to do that this time is because we're going to combine MFDs. We're going to use another MFD to give us more accurate targeting with regards to our altitude at Earth. And that's the whole point of this video is to show how we can improve our accuracy for our targeting. So what we want to do at this point then is just go to the apoapsis and circularize. Let's do that. And again, when APT is down to about 100 seconds, you want to come out of time warp so that you give yourself, give your vessel enough time to uh, orient. And it's not efficient to uh, press prograde and use time warp, but in these example videos, I'm trying to just save time on the video. In a, in a flight where you're trying to conserve fuel, you don't want to do that. So when we get out the way out to just a, you know, a couple seconds here, go full power on the main. Be careful not to overshoot like I just did. Translation. <laughs> but we can translate back just a tad. And now we've got a circular orbit. Okay, turn prograde off. Now we are just, we're just 420 seconds away from the time to do the burn. We're going to use Transex to set up our targeting and do everything like we did before, but this is where things deviate from the previous from the previous example. We're going to bring up Interplanetary MFD on this side. Interplanetary MFD has a has one feature that's wonderful that Transex does not have, and it is the map program. I mean, there's don't get me wrong, IMFD has a lot of great features, and we'll learn how to use it later. But for the sake of accurate targeting, uh, the map program in IMFD just can't be beat. Now, it's interesting to note, though, that these other programs that, that IMFD have don't have the accuracy of the map program. So all these other programs are limited uh, the same way Transex is limited. So all these other programs are just as inaccurate as Transex. But the map program has just additional uh, multi-body calculations that it does that allows it to accurately calculate where our uh, where we're going to end up when we go from point A to point B. It's not perfect and the farther you have to go the more inaccurate it is and the more bodies there are around a system like when you get out to Saturn and there's eight moons or when you get to Jupiter and there's four moons the more bodies there are the more difficult it is for it to figure things out. But here around the Earth moon system it's very accurate. So if we bring up map on this side and we reference the Earth and we can press the uh, DSP to turn on the display lines like we have here. So that's the Earth in the middle, and that's the uh, orbit of the moon around, around, the, uh, around the Earth. And we can press this AZO button. Uh, basically, that turns off auto-zooming. So when we have different things happen, the, the, this MFD will try to zoom in and zoom out automatically. It's kind of irritating. So it actually kind of helps to shut that off. Now... By default, though, it's telling us that it's, it's showing us what our apoapsis reference is going to be at Earth. And that's not what we want to know. We want to know what our low point is going to be. In other words, since we're lowering one side of our orbit to get back to Earth, we want to know exactly where that low point is going to be. And with Transex, um, again, unfortunately, it's so inaccurate that we can't rely on that number at all. So when we set that number, the focus PED, when we set it to 6.571, then we go back to Earth, we're off by, you know, a thousand kilometers or something. It's really bad. But in, in uh, interplanetary MFD, if we reference Earth and we use the periapsis instead of the apoapsis as a reference, we can actually see what our PEA will be. Now, the way you bring up the PE reference is by pressing, uh, 
you want to press the page button to get over to these options and then press select and you can see now we have PE and it says two of two whereas here we had AP which is one of two but with PE up we have now access to what our periapsis is going to be and if we follow that number as we do the burn in transects and we stop the burn when we're at 200 kilometers then we can then warp time forward all the way to the earth with no mid course corrections so let's just see how that works uh, we could also set our periapsis to you know if we wanted to do an air an atmospheric braking maneuver at earth we'll get into that a little bit later it's a little bit more of an advanced idea but if we want to set the periapsis we could also set it for say 70 kilometers that would be a pretty good uh, number for atmospheric braking i think i kept saying 60 in the previous video but i think it's actually i think a better number is actually 70. but we're getting close to the uh, time to begin the burn and we're not far off from position you can see the x is right there uh, so we're just going to go ahead and warp time forward until we're a bit closer to the time to begin the burn then we're going to turn on auto center so when we're we're pretty like i said we're pretty well lined up so let's get all the way down to about 70 seconds all right there we are and let's uh, find auto center there it is and turn auto center on and then we're we can go ahead and do a bit of time warp to get through that last little bit there now i'm not going to use burn time calculator to get the burn from transax i'm going to do this manually because we're not we're not using that amount of delta v we're we're basing our decision for when to end the burn based on what our periapsis distance is according to interplanetary mfd so if we got the maneuver from transex and put it into burn time calculator and did the burn we would either undershoot the burn or we would overshoot the burn by a significant amount and i think it's actually we it's like it's i think it's the case that we always overshoot by a significant amount so here we are doing the burn in two one and burning now we're just going to watch uh, over here in interplanetary MFD, and you'll see here in a moment, once we get enough velocity, you'll see some lines start to form. And we can do a bit of time warp to get through the beginning of this. That's good. Now you can see these lines starting to form. And again, watch the periapsis distance. That's all we're looking at now. And when you get down to, say, 10, start backing off the main so you don't overshoot. And there, I, well, I still overshot. Rotation, so we're going to just use a little bit of translation to back uh, back things up a little bit. It's a little bit ineff inefficient to do that, but it's unfortunate. So there we are at, let's go right for 200 exactly. Yeah, right there. Now again, the first thing you do when the burn is complete is you turn off auto center. But note, it's interesting that we still, according to Transex, we still have 19, almost 20 meters per second to burn now you can imagine if we actually burned that additional 20 meters per second how far off our PEA would be it would be off by a huge amount so now let's v, v, uh, view over to the maneuver and turn maneuver mode off and that's it we're all set we are ready to go back to earth and we will not have um, any mid course corrections to make uh, this might slip by a uh, hundred meters or 200 meters, but it won't be more. I don't think it'll be more than a kilometer in either direction. So let's go ahead and test that. Let's uh, kill rotate. Let's warp time forward at a thousand. And what I like to do is warp time forward until I'm in the retrograde position to the body that I'm coming from. So right about there. Now I'll kill rotate. Now I'll warp time forward at 10,000. That way you can see the body zooming way as you go and we're you know we're away from the moon we're going to be orbiting earth here in a moment you know this will update so we'll be within earth's strong soi the stage is just updated you can see our position here as we're coming down the uh, hill so to speak you can do a hundred thousand but it's really easy to just overshoot your uh your time warp if it, at a hundred thousand when you're going just from the when the, from the moon to the earth but notice how steady our PEA is holding according to IMFD uh, let me just go back to real time real quick because we are now within the strong SOI of earth we don't need transex for anything anymore let's bring up um, orbit MFD and auto reference the earth and let's go prograde to the earth so we can see where we're going and back to real time turn off prograde Actually, let me give it another second to stabilize. Okay, now let's go ahead and warp time forward the rest of the way. Well, let me go. Let me kill rotate. 
I don't like the vessel spinning around as I'm warping time forward. It drives me nuts. Uh, watch your PET value so that you know how far away you are. You don't want to overshoot your, you know, you don't want to do so much time warp that you overshoot. So now we're down to just uh, 8,000 seconds, 7,000. You can see Earth coming into view there. And again, look at that PEA. I mean, I believe it was 200.1. I don't think it changed by even 100 meters. You did note that when we were warping time away from the moon, it changed a little bit. It went down to like 199.7, I think. Uh, but then it came right back up to where ex to the exact number that we set it at. So that's how that's how right on accurate this can be. And now our PET is uh, you know coming down. And here we are, we're home. Take a look at the external view. And as we're coming coming around to the uh, low point, of course, the way we the way we can. Uh, circularize our orbit. Actually, I wasn't planning on showing this, but something else I'll show that IMFD is capable of doing then it does it really well and it's easy to understand so we can we can address this even before we get into learning how to use IMFD. So we've, we, we just saw how dead on accurate it is to use IMFD for going from the moon to the earth and setting your target altitude. Something else we can do if we come to the, uh, uh, the uh, course program and we go to orbit insert and actually since this is an absolute beginner guide let me explain a little bit about how to navigate IMFD because um, I, I talked about this in my training videos with Dimitri but I haven't talked about IMFD at all in my absolute beginner guide so when you bring up IMFD the way you get back to the main menu is just by pressing that menu button and that gives you access to the different programs that IMFD has now don't worry about all the individual programs it, it, it just just learn one thing at a time like we did here we learned a little bit about how that map program worked and just you know just know that and that's good enough now to get back to that main menu we press the M menu button now what we want to do is we want to access a different program inside of IMFD so instead of accessing the map program there's all these other programs but with the one we want is is one of the course programs the course menu actually has uh what is it five different programs in here and the way you change between these programs is by using previous and next and it's uh, it's very clear whichever one is highlighted is the one that you're using and the one that we want in this case is orbit insert so once it's highlighted press the uh, set button and now that program is selected and you're done it's that simple there's only really one more thing we have to do and what we're doing here is we're saying that we want to use IMFD to circularize our orbit so the only thing we have to do is press page and then auto burn and auto burn will do exactly what the name implies it will automatically do the burn at the time that you see here so it's right now it's waiting and you can even use time warp the nice thing about IMFD is that it won't let you overshoot like in transects when you have a maneuver upcoming you can actually time warp past the maneuver but I, interplanetary MFD won't let you do that so if I tried to go out to 10,000 time warp right now it won't even let me it'll stop me at 100 time warp and then once we get down to 200 seconds it automatically backs down to 10 I didn't do anything and then when it gets to 180 it automatically orients the vessel into the correct position it'll stay at 10x time warp uh, all the way through the burn until it gets to the end of the burn and then it'll come back to real time so that's one of the nice things about IMFD in this in this program in particular orbit insert can be quite useful because it's more accurate than using a burn time calculator for the sake of circularizing your orbit we can see we've come back to earth and now uh, we had our PA set at uh, 200 kilometers although it looks like it's going to be off a bit here Yeah, again, that's the difference between the uh, different programs. The map program is highly accurate, but these other programs like Orbit Insert and the rest of them are not. But nevertheless, you can see we, we hit our target within a very close margin. If I wanted to, I could have stopped the burn a, few, a couple seconds early to keep my apoapsis at 200. And then I could have gone around to the other side and raised my periapsis. But, you know, you're, you're fine right here at 195 kilometers is fine. So that is a, another look at how to make the trip from the moon back to the earth 
But the point of this video was to show how to use some additional tools, again, how to combine MFDs so that we can have more accuracy in our overall planning. And more accuracy just ultimately means that you're it's more efficient, it's a better flight. You're not going to use as much fuel as you would if you have really sloppy planning. You know, sometimes I, I do searches on YouTube almost every day for Orbiter 2010, and I sort by the most recent videos that have been uploaded. And I, I often see people, and I, first of all, let me say I appreciate everybody that makes Orbiter 2010 videos because there, there aren't enough on, of them on YouTube. But I often see people make uh, videos going to the moon or coming back to the Earth from the moon, and they're so horribly inefficient. They, get, they lift up off the moon. They do no planning, like while they're landed there at Brighton Beach. They do no planning. They lift up off the moon. They get into orbit around the moon with like some completely arbitrary heading that doesn't even make any sense. And then they do this burn that doesn't make any sense, and they end up in this really bizarre orbit around the Earth if they're lucky. Sometimes they end up in orbit around the sun. And then they do all these corrective burns to get down to the Earth. It's really, really sloppy. And you spend just a crazy amount of fuel doing it that way. So if we can learn how to do things properly and efficiently, then we then we know that we're you know we're pretty good orbitants. You know we're we're doing things the right way. So that's going to be it. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it wasn't too fast for you. Again, I went through the first part of the setup really fast because we've already covered that in the previous videos. So if you need if you need a refresher on that, just simply go back and watch the, the previous two or three videos, and I spend a lot of time explaining exactly everything that I did at the beginning of this video. But I really, in this video, I just wanted to focus on explaining how to use that simple map program that comes with IMFD so that we can have pinpoint accuracy in our targeting for our PEA without doing any mid-course corrections on our way back to Earth. And then as a bonus, I, and I wasn't even thinking about doing this, but as a bonus, I threw in this orbit insert uh, here at the end, and you saw how very easy that was to use. We didn't have to set anything up. All we did was select the program, and it automatically just knows. It's like magic almost. So uh, if you like this video, like it. And if you didn't like it, then don't like it. If, if, if this didn't explain things well enough, let me know, and I'll try to uh, maybe do another video to show how this all works. Uh, but hopefully that covers it. And we will cover IMFD in a lot of detail later on in the Absolute Beginner Guide. But I want to start with Transex because I, I feel like um, I feel like if you learn IMFD first, you might choose to never learn Transex, and that's not good because Transex is powerful and it can do things that IMFD can't do. But I am but Transex for some people I think it feels harder, feels more technical. So I think it's actually better better to learn that one first. And then IMFD is a breeze to learn after that. Check for links in the description down below, and I will see you in the next video.